The Sons of Liberty, a secret organization founded by John Hancock and Samuel Adams in 1765, played a crucial role in the American Revolution and are often associated with the iconic Boston Tea Party. The Sons of Liberty had one mission in mind, to fight for more freedom for colonial Americans, and they were willing to go to extreme lengths to achieve it. They believed that the British government was mistreating the colonists, and their tactics, which included threats and violence, were aimed at provoking a confrontation between the Americans and the British. Before the American Revolution, the Sons of Liberty, led by Samuel Adams and John Hancock, were infuriated by British mistreatment of American colonists and sought to bring about change, starting in Philadelphia and eventually expanding to all 13 colonies, with primarily landholding men being the most active participants. The formation of the Sons of Liberty was primarily triggered by the Stamp Act, which not only infuriated numerous colonists, but also led to a significant increase in the organization's membership, with people joining continuously. By November 1765, members were spread as far as New York City, and by March 1766, additional colonies such as New Jersey, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Virginia, and Maryland had also joined the cause. The Sons of Liberty were no strangers to violence, even in a time when it was the norm. They didn't hesitate to resort to extreme measures like tar and feathering, burning buildings, and instilling fear in British officials. Some well-known American revolutionists who were part of the Sons of Liberty include Samuel Adams, Benedict Arnold, John Hancock, Patrick Henry, and Paul Revere, while there were also lesser-known members who signed the Declaration of Independence like William Paca, William Ellery, Samuel Chase, and William Williams. The Sons of Liberty recognized the importance of a symbol and created their own flag, called the Rebellious Stripes Flag, with four white vertical stripes and five red vertical lines, which caught people's attention and connected events to the organization. Before the Sons of Liberty, there was a group called the Loyal Nine consisting of artisans, shopkeepers, and notable figures such as distillers, printers, ship captains, painters, and jewelers, some of whom later joined the Sons of Liberty. The name Sons of Liberty originated from the Stamp Act, and it was during this time that the Loyal Nine, including Colonel Isaac Barr, joined the secret revolutionary organization. Every year, the Sons of Liberty commemorated the Stamp Act riot with a grand celebration called the Liberty Dinner and lively parades held under a tent by the Liberty Tree Tavern. The British government's attempts to tax the colonies were met with resistance from the Sons of Liberty, who made it clear that the colonists would not stand for such unfair treatment, ultimately bringing them closer to war. In their most famous act of defiance, the Sons of Liberty made history by destroying over 90,000 pounds of tea during the Boston Tea Party, an event that ultimately triggered the American Revolutionary War and placed the blame on their leader, Samuel Adams. Colonists began using trees as meeting spots for protests after the Sons of Liberty set the trend and these trees became known as Liberty Trees, with Boston having one of the most important ones due to its association with revolutionary protests. Samuel Adams, cousin to John Adams, was not only famous for his involvement in the Boston Tea Party, but also for being a leading advocate for American independence, willing to resort to mob violence to achieve it. John Hancock, 
known for his iconic signature on the Declaration of Independence, was a prominent member of the Sons of Liberty who advocated for diplomatic solutions to the conflict between the American colonies and Great Britain. Starting his political career as a member of the Sons of Liberty, Benedict Arnold initially betrayed the British by engaging in under-the-table trading to avoid taxes, before eventually becoming a general in the Revolutionary War and ultimately switching sides to join the British. Patrick Henry, the renowned founding father and Virginia governor, played a significant role in the Sons of Liberty, advocating for American independence and rallying support for the organization throughout the colonies. His efforts extended beyond protesting and recruiting members, as he later became the first governor of Virginia. Marinus Willett, known for his street brawling antics, embraced his passion for American independence and eagerly joined the Sons of Liberty in New York, eventually rising to become the leader of the chapter. Under his guidance, they orchestrated protests and even managed to seize British storehouses. But when the Revolutionary War broke out, Willett shifted his focus and joined the New York Regiment. So, this guy Benjamin Edens, the publisher of the Boston Gazette, not only joined the Sons of Liberty, but also put his money where his mouth was, supporting revolutionary events like the Boston Tea Party. And even when the authorities tried to shut him down, he escaped and kept spreading the message of independence through his newspaper in Watertown, Massachusetts. Joseph Warren, a key figure in the Sons of Liberty, enthusiastically joined the organization upon learning about it, sharing radical ideas with fellow members and later becoming a revolutionary war general and president of the Massachusetts Revolutionary Congress in addition to his famous depiction in John Trumbull's painting. The death of General Warren. Warren also played a crucial role in alerting Samuel Adams, John Hancock, and the militias about their imminent arrests and the arrival of British troops. John Lamb, known as the son of a burglar, defied expectations and joined the Sons of Liberty, becoming one of their prominent members using his writing skills to spread the revolutionary message and recruit new members. James Otis Jr., a Harvard graduate, joined the Sons of Liberty and became a prominent member, using his powerful words to rally people against British tyranny, particularly after the enforcement of the Writs of Assistance. Isaac Sears, a regular colonist turned leader of the Sons of Liberty, earned the nickname King Sears for organizing the New York mob and advocating for violence as a means of resistance against the British government, particularly after the implementation of the Intolerable Acts. One notable figure who joined the Sons of Liberty was Benjamin Rush, a multi-talented individual who served as a physician educator, and politician, and played a crucial role in the American Enlightenment and the American Revolution. Rush's dedication to opposing British rule was evident in his passionate speeches, and his involvement in political committees such as the Medical Committee of the Continental Congress. Oliver Wolcott may not have played a major role in the Sons of Liberty but he did make his mark by signing the Declaration of Independence and even casting over 40,000 bullets on his own property to support the cause. He later became the governor of Connecticut. Thomas Young, a doctor turned organizer for the Sons of Liberty, fearlessly joined the organization and even participated in the Boston Tea Party without wearing a disguise leading to his capture and near-death experience at the hands of the British. Despite facing death threats, Young fled to Philadelphia where he continued to advocate for American independence. 
John Adams bestowed the nickname Samuel Adams of Pennsylvania upon Charles Thompson, as they both exhibited similar traits during the Revolution. But unlike Samuel Adams, Thompson delved into foreign affairs due to his role as Secretary to the Continental Congress for 15 years. Additionally, Thompson faced numerous enemies, including James Searle, who engaged in a physical altercation with him on the Congress floor resulting in facial injuries for both. Alexander McDougall, a New England merchant and seaman, initially had no issues with the British government until the Stamp Act affected his work, leading him to join the Sons of Liberty and become a New York leader, eventually becoming a major general in the war. James Swan, a Scottish immigrant who arrived in Massachusetts in 1765, joined the Sons of Liberty and played a crucial role in financing the revolutionary efforts while also forming strong bonds with influential figures such as John Adams, Samuel Adams, and John Hancock. As a writer, Swan used his platform to rally support for both the American Revolution and the Sons of Liberty, encouraging others to join their cause. Haim Salomon, a Polish immigrant who arrived in New York just before the American Revolution, wholeheartedly embraced the cause and used his skills as a businessman and financial broker to support the Sons of Liberty and revolutionary activities, even after enduring 18 months of torture as a captive on a British vessel. Benjamin Kent, a often overlooked Sons of Liberty member, gained popularity among notable members and founding fathers, and played a role in encouraging Adams to create the Declaration of Independence. Isaiah Thomas, a newspaper publisher and member of the Sons of Liberty, was the first person to publicly read the Declaration of Independence and gave the first account of the battles of Lexington and Concord. Despite angering the Massachusetts governor, he faced no consequences from the indictment ordered against him. John Brown, a member of the Sons of Liberty, is best known for instigating the Gaspé Affair, which played a significant role in the American Revolution. He was also involved in the slave trade, was a merchant and statesman from Rhode Island, and contributed financially to the Revolution. Today, his Providence home is a museum and national historic landmark.